Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Grizzly Bear Sims YouTube channel. My name is Jerry. Thanks so much for returning for another video. We are on Lawfold still. This is episode number 12. And we are, so in episode number 11, you may remember, hopefully you do, uh, because you just watched it um, about two days ago. Uh, you may remember that we went ahead and seeded uh, field number field number, what is it, field number 27, yeah, with um, Sunflower, so that is done, I got the rest of that done off camera that we didn't get completed, fully completed on the episode, and we're basically going to take the JCB here, and we are going to back up into this shed here, and pick up our, uh, our tether, and go ahead and tether that grass field that we had mowed uh, a couple of episodes ago. If I can get in here and get this picked up correctly. And there we go. And just pull this out. I probably could have parked this a little bit easier, a little bit better. There we go. Alright, so we've got our nice tether here. This is uh, the largest tether. It's a pretty good sized field after all, so um, might as well. Hope you're all having a wonderful um, start of your work week. Uh, you'll be watching this video on Monday. I'm recording this episode on Thursday, the what is it, the 26th of January. And yes, Colborough Park Farm version 2 came out this morning. Uh, at some time it came out. I, I saw that uh, folks were talking about it in some of the forums and such and so I have downloaded it I have not actually um, installed it yet I downloaded it from um, from the mod hub instead of uh, doing it through the game because it is uh, much quicker uh, that way if you download it through uh, through the game itself it does take much longer and so I went ahead and downloaded it from the mod hub and I have it and I just need to basically um, install that and then essentially start a new game and I'm going to try we'll just have to kind of see how it's going to work out uh, I'm certainly going to try to um, copy over my vehicle XML file and uh, see how that works with getting the vehicles back where they need to be um, don't know if that will uh, if that will work or not it should um, at least if there's not many changes, what I'll probably do is pull all the vehicles out into um, an available field, an empty field or something, and then um, copy and then save the, save the game to a new game save with the new map, and then copy over the vehicle XML file and see if all that works the way that it should. It should. I've certainly done it that way before. I'll, then I will uh, cheat in. Uh, the money and um, add in our, our fields and everything. And of course, we will be playing with the Seasons mod from the get go. So uh, that will be uh, somewhat interesting to play Coldboro Park Farm that way. Of course, most of the fields that we own right now will obviously own um, um, in the new game save because we are going to kind of pick up where we left off. Might as well. And. Um, then about the only other thing that we'll do is add in our animals and we'll probably just have to buy some uh, bells and some silage bells and stuff just to get their feeding up to where it needs to be. But I'll do all that off camera and then when we do come together uh, for the next episode, which I think is going to be like episode 10, I think, of Coldboro Park Farm, um, we'll at least be doing something um, semi-constructive on the farm. Now, <clears throat> you know, I will apologize because I know that I often say I'm going to do things or I talk about, you know, talk about a map. I know I talked about Chellington uh, for quite a while and I was kind of looking forward to playing it. I had not played Chellington in FS15 and I really wasn't, uh, really wasn't aware of, of the field sizes and such as that and so obviously um, I think uh, Coldboro Park Farm came out shortly after Chellington did, and of course that took my interest because I had obviously played uh, 
Colboro Park Farm in 15 and really quite enjoyed it. And as a matter of fact, I, as I've said before, that was Colboro Park Farm and FS15 was sort of my gateway to um, to British style maps, to, to the non-traditional square shaped fields and rectangular fields, etc. So obviously it, it, it it's, you know, has a special place in my heart for as far as farm sim goes with Coldborough Park Farm. Now I know in the last episode, episode number 11 that you watched on Saturday, I know I talked about Stevie's brand new map, Pine Cove Farm, and you know I spent about three or four hours off, uh, sort of off camera obviously, because I have not uh, released any episodes for that, uh, for that map, and I was going to start a series as we go through the, the curtain there. Um, I was going to start a series on Pine Cove Farm. I talked about it in the last episode, um, but I was sort of, I guess, even though I thought Coldboro Park Farm would probably come out this weekend, I suppose what I was sort of doing was I was uh, preparing for in case it didn't and then I was going to go ahead and start the series on Pine Cove Farm um, but as Coldboro Park Farm is now available I have decided that I'm going to put off Pine Cove Farm for now just because I really think trying for me trying to manage three three maps is going to be um, is going to be difficult uh, at least right now. Uh, I've got some other possible projects that I want to do. Uh, I can talk about those a little bit later. Uh, you'll hear about that stuff. Uh, but for right now, I'm going to resume Coldboro Park Farm. Um, I will eventually close out Goldcrest Valley. I've got two more episodes to basically record of that gameplay and get that done and then just kind of see how things go with this map and with obviously with Coldboro Park Farm and you know if um, if we complete the the year on this map Lawfolds then maybe um, I'll take another look at um, at Pine Cove Farm but for right now uh, I may continue dabbling with it just off camera just kind of my my private game save that I'll just, you know, play on my own and, and not do any, any video stuff. Because like I said um, in the episode uh, just before this one, episode 11, you know, I do enjoy the larger fields and larger equipment and such as that. Um, but, you know, I think that I really want to do Coldboro Park Farm for you guys. Um, and I want to continue with this map because this this actually this map is is quite popular as far as the uh, number of uh, views and I'm getting lots of good positive feedback from you guys that are watching and um, I appreciate that I really really do um, I, I won't lie to you I, I am, am you know I sort of in the morning you know these episodes release at uh, 6 a.m. Denver time, Mountain Time, and so in the morning, of course, um, I wake up and I enjoy my um, I enjoy my coffee and everything. Um, and um, I'm just going to go over here to this other side, and maybe I'll do a little bit more of a headland here, and then we'll go up and down on that that straighter that straighter side over there. Um, anyway, so I wake up in the mornings and. Um, you know, kind of excited. Uh, took my shower, and you know, my my Keurig, uh, my Keurig coffee maker. Boy, I tell you what, I, I could not do without that thing. Um, if any of you guys have those um, those Keurig um, uh, brewing machines with the little K cups and stuff like that, boy, I tell you what, that was uh, that was something that um, my wife and I bought. My wife isn't a coffee drinker, but I won't hold that against her. Uh, hey, she's from. You know, I've told you many times about my wife. She's a European from Belgium. Uh, she's lived about half of her adult life, though, in uh, in the UK, and so she's obviously a tea drinker. Um, so tea is her her passion, whereas coffee is mine, and quite um, quite deservingly so. I, I actually need my my coffee each and every day. It's the only 
I'd say it's about the only vice that I have um, other than maybe the occasional piece of chocolate cake or something like that but um, yeah I've got to have my coffee and, and on those occasions when I have doctor's appointments where I have to fast well I tell you what I am uh, I'm a bear and, and if you and if you've ever wondered why I go by the name Grizzly Bear Sims well uh, take my coffee away from me and you'll find out uh, how I got that name but anyway um, I enjoy my with my coffee in the mornings I enjoy uh, usually reading through my emails um, and my reading through the comments on the videos and stuff and actually I quite look forward to that and as I've said before um, this is an extension of the game for me it's an extension of the game play and the, and the hobby and everything uh, yes I am monetizing the videos um, but I'm monetizing the videos just to be able to uh, fund uh, more giveaways and stuff like that so I've actually, um, not to brag or anything, but I've actually been quite impressed with um, what the um, uh, amount of, of, of um, expected income, according to YouTube and Google Analytics stats are and everything. So, um, you know, at some stage we'll do another giveaway. We did one at our 100 subscribers and we're up to about 235 or 236 subscribers at this particular point in time. So we'll see how we go. But, but anyway, um, the whole video thing really is truly uh, just an extension of, of the gameplay of the hobby for me. That's, that's really all it is. Um, but I so look forward to and I've met so many wonderful people and I, I know I've talked about this before. Um, and it's it's truly uh, it's truly incredible the, the people that I've met um, through um, through uh, through the hobby through through my my gameplay and, and such and it's uh, just yeah it's just just an incredible incredible thing so many so many great people and and you know I, I, I experienced the same thing when I um, was a lot more active in the flight sim community. Um, I guess having having flown flight sims, or, you know, computer-based flight simulators for um, 30, 30 years. I mean, I, I started with the Commodore 64 back in the in the early to mid 1980s. So I mean, guys, don't don't forget. I'm I just celebrated my 50th birthday. So um, you know, I'm I'm older than dirt. Uh, I know that there's some folks older than me. Um, I won't mention any names, but um, but yeah, I've been I've been around the simulation gaming um, community quite a bit and have quite enjoyed uh, all that it has to offer. But I think that you know after having played flight simulators for so long, uh, I'm just um, I'm just a little bored with it right now. To be to be quite honest, I mean to be quite honest. Um, also, I'm really having a great time with the YouTube stuff, and I think farm sim. Obviously, I've, you know I've got 230. Six, 235 subscribers. Obviously, you guys have have subscribed for um, the farm sim content, and so uh, you know we'll just have to kind of see. I mean, I'd like to to bring other content to the channel, um, but I kind of got to figure out you know how best to do that and what you all want to see and how you want to see it and and whatever. But anyway. Um, yeah, just just to just to share with you, I really do appreciate the comments. It's 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 something that I've um, sort of gotten accustomed to. Now, one thing I will say um, that I, I just want to, to let you all know about because, um, and I don't know if you notice it or not, but I do release. You know, I'm releasing six videos a week right now, so I'm releasing uh, a video Monday through Friday, and then one on Saturday, and. Um, and of course, I, I pre you know I pre upload after I do the edits, and edits don't really take me a, an awful lot of time to do. Um, and I get those uploaded, and now that um, now that I've monetized the videos through YouTube, that allows me the opportunity to schedule the video releases, which is uh, very helpful to me to be able to do that because otherwise, before I would have to make sure I remembered to basically sign into YouTube and then basically uh, go ahead and change the status from private to public but at least now I can I can set it to sort of auto release and it, and it does that and that's very helpful to me 
but on the weekends um, if you if you do comment on my videos I'm pretty active on uh, following up with YouTube comments and stuff on Saturday but Sunday other than maybe a little bit of gameplay on Sunday morning kind of before my wife wakes up and before we kind of get going on with our our Sunday uh, rituals and everything um, I am pretty much not on social media um, for the rest of the Sunday until Monday morning so if for whatever reason you know I do check into PCSG and I check into the three dudes gaming network a couple of times on Sunday but um, I'm not you know I'm not glued to it um, if I see that you know somebody's left a comment on a video if I if my my phone buzzes because Gmail has said that I've got an email you know I may not respond to that or reply to that until uh, until Monday morning so it's just kind of you know it gives me a little bit of a break from the social stuff and it kind of keeps me from you know constantly looking at my phone and stuff like that as I'm trying to uh, um, you know spend time with the wife usually usually we're um, if I don't have honeydew projects that I need to do on Sunday um, a lot of times those will start on Saturday and I'll finish up or wrap things up if I need be on Sunday um, then we're usually watching we'll watch a few movies or watch a few uh, murder mysteries and stuff I think I've told you guys that we watch a lot of British content like uh, Midsummer Murders and uh, Endeavor um, and such uh, one show that I recently um, watched we sort of binge watched it last weekend was Poldark uh, season one so I'm thinking that uh, the weather's supposed to be kind of cold here in Colorado and I'm sort of thinking that uh, Poldark Season 2 is probably going to get binge watched uh, this weekend and just you know spend time with uh, with my wife and, and doing a few things and um, so that is sort of my schedule and I, and I you know I know I don't have to I don't have to share that with you guys um, but you know, I am sort of open and honest with my the way I do things, and I just want you to know that, you know, if you you know if you do send me a comment or something, if I don't respond to it, you know, it's not that I'm ignoring you or ignoring the channel or anything like that. It's just that you know I kind of need one day a week where I'm not really as heavily you know um, connected. I suppose I, I, I suppose the. The, the term is, you know, to sort of occasionally disconnect, and um, I think that um, that is just kind of what I do. All right. Well, we need to get our um, we need to get our thumbnail here while I'm thinking about it. Some weird looking smoke. We'll do it from this edge here. All right, just like that, and we'll bring the huds back up. Actually, I'll, um, let me shut those hides down so you guys can see, see more of the real estate, see more of the beautiful, beautiful grass getting turned into hay. So we're still in the same game day, obviously, that we cut the grass. Um, I've already sort of talked about the fact that, you know, depending on sort of where you live and how much sunlight and what the what the you know, temperatures and everything are uh, you know hay cutting grass for hay is a multi you know multi-day process and may even require you know tattering and everything a couple of uh, a couple of times to you know get the grass to all dry obviously um, it sort of does it magically with this one with this one pass um, and then, of course, we do need to go ahead and uh, rake this hay and go ahead and bale it. So we will be doing that um, in the next episode, most likely, um, because there isn't really much to do right now. I mean, we probably need to go and check on our sheep, uh, which we'll probably do at the, the next episode. Uh, check on the sheep and um, uh, make sure they have plenty of food and water. You've got to keep them 100% productive because I tell you what, sheep in this game are is the equivalent of what silage was um, in FS15. If you keep your uh, if you keep your sheep productive, fully productive, so keep them clean, keep them fed, uh, all the things that they need for feed. Which for sheep, that's just one thing, and that's either grass or hay. 
and then keep them watered, um, keep their, their food area clean, then you'll hit that magic 100% productivity mark and the sheep will earn you a pretty darn good living, living off of their wool. And of course with the Seasons mod it does change the behaviors with animals just a little bit and of course we'll, we'll more experience that with Colboro Park Farm because we'll be going with our full complement of animal uh, opportunities there. We will do pigs and we will do uh, sheep and we will do cows, uh, dairy cows, at Colboro Park Farm. Um, probably also going to put in, you know, stop milk cell, things like that, um, just to kind of make things a little bit more interesting uh, on that map. And, um, and of course, we now have to muck out their, um, their, um, the straw and the manure and everything, so that'll be extra tasks that we'll need to do. But, um, um, obviously, in the summer, the animals will consume more water because obviously it's it's warmer or hotter depending on you know where where the map. I don't I don't think the seasons mod obviously the seasons mod doesn't take into consideration um, location of the map. So like for example you know this map is is set some well this map is set in Scotland obviously. Uh, Colborough Park Farm obviously is set in England. Um, I don't think that it, it, you know, Seasons Mod doesn't necessarily say, okay, this map is based in England, so therefore we're going to um, present you with typical English weather. Um, or if the map took place in Texas or Oklahoma somewhere, we're going to present you with, you know, temperatures that's going to exceed 100 degrees for, you know, 60-something days consecutively with, with no rain for you know, like 30 or 40 days consecutively. Obviously, it doesn't. It doesn't do that. It would be cool if, um, if the if maybe you know future functionality. So, Mr. Uh, the folks that are doing that's doing the seasons mod, uh, if that would be something that could be um, you know a future a future thing, a future enhancement to the mod, to where that you know you could based on regions or based on some kind of, of data obviously that would need to be put into the mod itself so that you could sort of say okay you know my farm the map that I'm playing I am simulating a farm that's located in the UK and so therefore the weather temperatures and the weather itself would be sort of patterned off of that um, or the map is positioned in Oklahoma or in Texas or in Colorado or you know um, whatever that would be kind of cool now you know because uh, obviously I've been to the UK quite a number of times been to Belgium quite a number of times it tends to be every time I come over uh, it turns into a wet period it either turns into a wet period or it turns into a heat wave uh, the last time that we were in Belgium which was uh, in July, as a matter of fact, it got reached nearly, you know, like 95 degrees, which, um, you know, Mike can, Mike will probably admit and agree that, you know, for that, for that area, for those regions, because those kind of temperatures really are sort of uncalled for, or unheard of, I should say, um, that uh, when you do have temperatures that it becomes that warm, you know, it really, is it's really hot because you know, air conditioners are not something that are commonplace and uh, whatnot. So anyway, I don't know. I mean, that might be that might you know that might be difficult if it's if it is precisely the way it is. Of course, we are playing. It, it is all this is scaled. You know, all this is is scaled to a certain extent. I mean, we're playing. We're playing three game days per season, so essentially, if you think about, um, you know, a 12 a 12 uh, month year, uh, each season is approximately, you know, three three months long. Um, so, you know, each month uh, is, or each season represents three months. So, I suppose that we would be in the coming up almost on the the, the mid to late June time frame if we think about summer summer starting um, June what 20 21st something like that um, so with this being the third the third day the third game day it's late spring uh, we're basically knocking on um, mid 
mid a mid June's um, month, at least in the northern hemisphere, which is where we are. So, <clears throat> excuse me. All right. Well, we are uh, coming up. We've got about five or six minutes uh, left before our magic number of 30 hits. And so I will just basically start saying thank you to all uh, for watching the videos. I really do appreciate it. I know that I, I say this, but let me tell you, I am um, uh, I subscribe to that theory that a man's word is his bond. And when I say something, I mean it. And um, I really, really do appreciate all of you folks that watch and that um, uh, comment and like and all that kind of stuff. And I will just say that you know, I am truly doing this to help and to give something back. And um, if you have questions, you know, feel free to ask them in the comment section. Or, you know, if if uh, if you haven't already, uh, please do come over and sign up uh, at either PCSG or the Three Dudes Gaming Network. Or hey, here's a novel idea: sign up for both of them because uh, they're both excellent communities. Not only because I'm a part of it, but um, just a, that, that was a joke by the way um, but because they really truly are um, excellent communities with excellent people not only excellent people running them but also excellent people that are a part of them that are members that you know log in each and every day that are more than willing to help answer questions to um, um, you know help if you have an issue uh, as an example uh, somebody, and I'm not sure if you are a subscriber of my channel or not, um, I don't recognize your name as being someone that frequently comments, but there was an individual, uh, he posted a question, actually the same question in the Three Dudes Gaming Network as well as uh, the question in PCSG, so he's obviously a member of both communities. Um, so he may actually be a viewer of mine, or maybe um, Reefy 1952s or, or Eustace Farmers, but anyway. Um, he's having some issues because when he downloads um, some mods, they don't show up or it locks his game up or whatever. And so, you know, pretty much the response that he got uh, on both sides was, you know, we need to take a look at your logs for you. And we've got more than enough uh, talented individuals that, you know, can help read logs that kind of understand what uh, some of the errors and stuff means. And most likely it's a dodgy. You know, it's a dodgy mod that he's got installed that is causing some conflicts with maybe some even some good mods. Um, you have to just be careful with that kind of stuff. Um, you know, as, as, as wonderful as mods are, um, sometimes they can certainly cause you to want to pull out your hair because um, when you install a mod, it can, you know, have near catastrophic um, impact to your system and everything or you know to your game and everything and that's why I back up my game saves on a regular basis and when I do install mods I typically install just one at a time and I only typically download mods from reputable sites like PCSG, um, Mod, uh, Mod Central, uh, FSUK, American, um, American Eagle Modding, places like that. Uh, I steer away from uh, those that use uploaded.net and those kind of those kind of things, but you know, even even getting a mod from a reputable site or even the Giants Mod Hub, you know, something could still go wrong um, because they do change and affect the way that the game uh, functions and the way that the game plays, obviously. And so I am a, a believer in making backups, making backups often, uh, testing, installing one mod at a time, and if you have um, issues, then if you're only installing one mod at a time, then it's easy to remember what you've just installed, and then you can just basically uninstall it, and uh, hopefully that will cure the problem, and then you can throw that mod away until maybe an updated version is released, or um, if that doesn't solve the problem, if it did kind of mess up your game save, obviously if you're backing up on a regular basis, um, that is good as well. So also, just to add, because I know a lot of you guys uh, sort of pay attention um, to the things that we say uh, in our videos, today is the 26th of January, and I did update both the AI Vehicle Extension Mod, which I um, call Auto Combine, and also Course Play, 
uh, new versions are have been released since the last time I updated and that was about a week ago so go out and grab those if you um, use those two mods because updates are available and um, I will just say thank you so much for watching I really do appreciate it I look forward to your comments and to your questions or any other feedback that you want to leave and I think I missed a spot over here and I wanted to get that before I go down to the north end and finish that up but anyway so thank you all so much for watching I do appreciate that and um, I will be back again very soon with another video and of course we will be starting um, Coldborough Park Farm there it is right there uh, Coldborough Park Farm will be rebooting that series here very soon and get that back into the regular rotation and thank you all so much for watching and I will see you back here Grizzly Bear Sims YouTube channel. Take care. Bye-bye.